Woo! Just climbed that hill. <laughs> Tell you what now, this farm gets your cardiovascular system a workout. I know it doesn't look that steep. Some of these hills are steep enough, you gotta be careful. Um, even driving a four wheeler up them, especially, you know, going uphill, if you stall and you stop, don't give it a lot of gas. <laughs> Good morning, folks. This is Greg Judy, Green Pastures Farm. I don't guess I gave my introduction, but I just moved the uh, bowls and the uh, steer mob onto a fresh paddock of the new farm we just bought about a month or so ago. I just saw a stake over here. It's got a red marker on it. I'm going to go get that because them bulls or steers will get that red tape they like chewing on it i don't like them eating plastic i've been real careful about getting all the metal stakes there were some metal little wire stakes that had flags on them darn things they'll chew on that just because it's plastic and uh you know you're always concerned about them swallowing wire oh i wanted to give you all uh, a learning, a little learn, learning deal this morning. Uh, usually I try and teach a little something on our videos. Um, this is, uh, so when you're going down in a valley like this, I came off that big hill up there. It's probably, this paddock's probably a third of a mile. It goes clear up on top of that horizon and back up over the hill on this horizon. But anyway, when you're going down in a hill like this, it came off the top, I'm going down this valley. When you stick your step ins in, in a low area like this, and then you're going immediately back uphill, always put your pigtails, I'm sorry, your, your tread ends at a 45, 45 degree angle. You notice that one's at an angle, and so is that one. The reason you do the 45 is that wire is wanting to pull straight up. Okay, if you put that pigtail in straight up and down and, you know, the tension over the day or let's say you set out your paddocks two or three days ahead, there's a chance that that post could go boink. Well, when it goes boink, it goes up in the air. Now your cattle move themselves. They went under this low spot because your post didn't hold. So put them at a 45. This is a wide, a little wide valley here. So I use two. Normally I just use one, but you know, I, I wanted to be a little bit liberal with my post. And I just want to make sure they don't move forward when I don't want them to move forward. <laughs> um, let's go get that steak. Yeah, th this is a real shame right here. I've got a water tank there and a concrete pad with a water, winter water um, tank already mounted to it. Guess what? I can't use it. Um, it's against, well, you've got to have morals in this world. And the guy that bought that 10 acres up there, he's got the pond. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's his land. And I mentioned a little something about using this water tank, and he was pretty alarmed. He's like, oh gosh, you're gonna, you're gonna drain my pond. It's a big pond, and it's bank full. I wanna show you all something. He doesn't have the water shut off. So, you know, you gotta have a conscience in this world. I've got one, and that's why that tank's empty. They've got to walk way back over there by that tree line. I've got a water lane built to a tank that's twice this size, and they've got water, but look at this. All I have to do is hook that hose up. And unless he's turned it off, there's tremendous pressure coming out of here. See that? I could hook it up to that hose and you know, an 84 head 
this time of year they're probably drinking around three to four gallons <laughs> so it is that uh, I'll just do the math keep it simple 90 let's just say there's 90 head times three is 270 gallons folks that pond up there's got probably three million gallons of water in it it's a big pond but you know he didn't act like he wanted me to use it I'm not going to use it and he would never know because down on the hill he can't see it from his property but we're going to get this plumbed up we're going to get our own water uh, it's probably going to be coming from a pond with a pump it's going to take some time but we'll get it but you know you got to have morals and uh, you got to live with yourself you do something that's not morally right look at that the spider web always before you hook your hose up see it's, it's got the valve on it and everything it's ready to go <laughs> but the bulls and steers are going to get some exercise today they've got to walk from here it's about a half a mile one way so they're walking a mile half mile over and half mile back to get a drink and uh, am i losing a little bit of gain doing that probably but boy these animals are healthy they're all very, very healthy. And uh, I just wonder, that, that thing's in there pretty good. And so I don't want them pushing that out and turning it upside down. But okay, where are we going? Yes, up here to take that flag out. I got sidetracked. Folks, we've got grass. No rain. We can't buy rain. <laughs> We had a really good storm system come up on Tuesday. Yeah, it was Tuesday. Ah, the lightning and the thunder. And the dogs were crawling underneath the vehicles and wasn't in the shop. I mean, it was one of those kaboom, kaboom, kaboom kind of things. I'm like, man, we're going to get it. And uh, we got one of those 40-inch uh, rains, they call them. It's 40 inches between raindrops. Yeah, it was 40 inches between raindrops. <laughs> Had to steal that from my Nevada fella. Had a guy here, and him and his family came. Really nice ranching family. They've moved, uh, I believe they're in South Dakota now. Maybe North Dakota. Anyway... Uh, they had in Nevada, and I said, what kind of rainfall? And he goes, 40 inches. I looked at him kind of funny, and he kind of grinned. He goes, well, Greg, is 40 inches between raindrops. <laughs> That's Nevada. Boy, we got some good grass in here, folks. Really good grass. This is Reed's Canary grass right here. Yeah, this is Reed's Canary. And then right next to it, of course, is my fescue, orchard grass, bluegrass. Starting to see the big blue stem, just starting to get going. That's what a lot of that brown stuff is down there, is big blue. And I'm going to snap this marker off. This is a farm we bought from the developers. They were going to put houses. So this is track... This would have been track eight where I'm standing on. Track 15 was over there. Let's see what's on the other side of this one. Yeah, eight to the right, 15 where I'm standing. So what I'm gonna do, oh, man, that feels good. Take that with me. I was gonna see if they drove, yep, sure enough. There it is. They drove a big old, I see you talk about, well, Greg, how are you ever going to find that if you would want to sell off a track to somebody? How are you going to find that? It's registered with the county. GPS that can walk you right to this spot. So this is a corner of one of the 10-acre tracks. But guess what? These are coming with me. There. <laughs> I love that. This is cattle country, this is in house country. 
didn't I can understand you know there was a guy here he was uh, from a great big real estate business I mean he's they've got over 300 different outlets I think he said across the world and I took him over here it was one of the stops we made on the farm tour was showing him the bulls and the steers and he looked at it and he goes well yep he said i can see why a developer wanted to get his hands on this i mean look at it you know you put a house up there on that hill and every morning you look at and you see that <laughs> well you'd be also seeing 13 other well all together there were 17 house tracks on here and now there's only four that we bought the other 13. But anyway, um, I'm just thankful. Somebody said the other day, well, Greg, aren't you disappointed you didn't get it all? Well, folks, you can't live your life like that. You be, be thankful for what you get, not what you don't get. Don't live your life, you know, pitying about what you didn't get. Jan and I, we feel like we're the most fortunate people on the face of the earth to be able to, to get what we got right here, you know? We're very happy with it. And you don't, don't cry over what you don't have. Be thankful for what you do have. It's a good model to live by. You'll be a lot happier. And uh, things will go better for you, too. Because a, a pessimistic person, somebody that always looks at life like, you know, the glass is only... You know, the glass is half empty. Instead of looking at the glass as being half full. Yeah. Just little things like that, you know, can really change the way you think about life and the way you go about life and the way you interact with other people. Look at that metal arc. Look at him. Where'd he land? Well, there he goes. When I pulled up here this morning, folks, there was a turkey up there by that old roadway, and he was gobbling. And uh, I popped over the hill, he went out the strut, and walked back into that woods over there. We got deer, we got turkey, we got meadowlarks, all kinds of different songbirds. This is my office. This is my office. Folks, there's nothing wrong. I want, I want to emphasize this to you folks that are out there that are in an area or in a place where you're not real happy right now and it could be a town job, you're sitting behind a cubicle. There's nothing wrong with that. Use that time. Use that time in your town job to position, to position yourself where later on you can do this. What do I mean by that? Well, save your money. Use that town money, put it in a bank, put it in a savings account, get some interest drawn on it, and let it build up. Just keep adding to it. Don't go out to eat all the time. Don't go buy a brand new car every single year. You don't need one of those starting out. Jan and I didn't have one. We walked. We didn't have a four-wheeler when we started. We walked. And if you'll save your money and buy those things right over there, those things right over there. Folks, every one of them's eating grass right now and they're putting money in our pocket. They're putting weight on from grass that I didn't have to plant. Okay? So, I wanted to show you all, a lot of people are getting confused how we're doing the water. There's a pond half a mile over there by those trees. It's got a really nice tank on it. And when we moved off that section of the farm, we just built a water lane. We're extending that water line now back to that tank. So this is my paddock this morning. I put my little slip knot on it. I grabbed my reel, which was hooked up there by that mineral feeder, which gave them access to this paddock right here. I grabbed my reel, and I grabbed about eight step-ins, little Brian posts, and I walked down the hill. The width of the paddock that they were on there there's the starting of the water line where those brush piles are i'm working on these automobiles but that's how we're doing it we're extending the water lane the width of the paddock back to the water so tonight when i move them 
Okay. That reel right over there. I, I know this is confusing, so I'm just, I'm just gonna walk you all to it. So I know we're all people like to see. So I'm gonna walk you over here. Tonight, I'm gonna grab this reel right here. It's on a little corner post I made out of a pigtail. It's hot. It's keeping them from going north onto the next patty. I'm gonna grab this reel. And I'm gonna go, woo! I'm not gonna say that too loud because they'll all come over here. I'll go, woo! And here they come. Okay? I'm gonna grab this reel. And I'm gonna grab my corner post. <clears throat> that little red pigtail. That's a tarragate. I'm gonna unwind that and I'm gonna take this reel. Wind it this way so it's wrapped up. And I'm gonna walk with my pigtail. I'm gonna pick that post up. I'm gonna pick that one up. That one. And I'm gonna stick in my corner post right there. That pigtail. And I'm gonna stick to my steers and my bulls. And they're gonna go zoom, flying into that new paddy. Well, I've already got my next one put in up there. They can't go in any further than that. So now my reel's here by me. All my steers and bolts are in here. The new paddy. This reel has the corner post on it. I'm gonna grab about six step ins. Now let's put it in, folks. I'm gonna walk back over here. Here we go. I'm sticking pigtails as I go. How wide is my water lane? Oh, maybe 90 feet. You know, 60, 90 feet. And what's awesome about it, folks, it's up here on top of this hill. So I get my manure and my urine. On a lane going to water, you always get a lot of manure and urine just because of the walking of the whole mob. Well, if you keep that walking up on the hill, you're using gravity. You're using gravity to move the, the manure and the urine across your landscape. Don't put a water lane down the bottom of that valley. That is not a smart thing to do. Okay, so I'm walking, I'm putting my step-ins in. Okay, I'm going down this valley. I just told you what I do on valleys, you all remember that? So I'm going in this valley. This pigtail gets put in at a 45 degree angle. So that when I come down and I go up, it doesn't pop out of the ground. Okay, I'm continuing I'm going over to this corner. This is my old water lane, okay? This reel is all the way back to the entrance to my water gap. And all I'm gonna do is take my reel and wrap it right here. I'm gonna wrap it around that. This, this is hot. Okay, so all I did was extend my water lane the width of my paddock. That's all I did. Now to do this, you need several reels, and I've got plenty of reels. That's one thing I have bought over the years, as we got better financed. I'd rather buy a reel than a, a new 100 horse tractor. And um, so now the bowls and the steers will use this new water lane and the old water lane to go up here, down over the hill, back up the top of that far hill over there and get him a drink. Folks, that's no distance for an animal to walk. It's only half a mile. My goodness. That's nothing for a four-legged critter. They walk more than you and I do. Okay? So that's what we're doing. We only have three water points on 141 acres. You can't move the water without a pump. Or if you had the Let's say you had a pond clear up in this valley, you can definitely use gravity and run it down through the hills. And that's, you know, we're looking at that, but we got a problem. It's called Panhandle Eastern Gas Line. <laughs> you can't dig a pond in a gas line. You can't cover it up with water, and you sure don't want to be digging around it unless you want a great big explosion. So that's got us hampered a little bit where we can put one. There's areas in here you, you definitely could, but... Uh, Right now, it's just all brainstorming time. That's what we're doing. And uh, here comes an eagle. I'll be darned. Big old eagle on the horizon there. 
I'm gonna keep this video running. He may come right over the top of us. Starting to see more eagles. No, he's gonna go back the other direction. Oh, he's a big old bird. Kind of neat to see eagles. We didn't have them for so many years, and now we're starting to see them quite often. Anyway, folks, there's there it is. The, the steers and the bulls are feeding themselves. We're in the best business in the world. The grass conversion to beef business. And for those of you all out there on the fence of changing your lifestyle to something that is more enjoyable, set a goal. Sit down and discuss with your significant other what you want to do and then set some steps up and go for it. But learn. There's a lot of opportunities out there to learn. A lot of opportunities. And uh, there's a bunch of people coming here in two weeks to learn. At our grazing school in May, we got two of them coming up on our farm, greenpasturesforum.net. Check it out if you want to come. We still got a few spots open. Hope to see some of y'all there. Have a great day.